So Dean, what do you see as the major impediments of implementing SAFE in an organization? Well, there are cert there's certainly more than one, yeah. but um, you, you probably noticed that essential SAFE assessment that we did, the, little, the kind of the workshop that can be done in tutorial mode or just by yourself. I delivered that at Agile Mile High a month or so back and we had a pretty good audience, five or six hundred people, and everybody had a copy of the assessment. And they assessed themselves based upon some things you have to do in Essential Safe, like can you do a system demo? Do, 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 do you do inspect and adapt? Um, do you have any architectural runway? Do you apply cadence and synchronization? Are the roles really fulfilled cross-functionally, the basic the essence of SAFE? Uh, and there's also a question then about, you know, do you have the leadership support you need and the leader, do the leaders have the knowledge they need to successfully lead? And you fill out your little Pareto chart and the bigger the black, uh, the higher the black boxes are, the more stuff you have to work on. I think it's pretty, pretty universal that the one that gets the most hits most of the time is the leadership question um, and um, that's a fundamental, different be a fundamental difference between agile thinking and lean thinking. Agile thinking was defined by teams because we as their leaders couldn't help them. We, we didn't create the things that work for them. Uh, lean looks at it differently. Lean is a, is a leadership led initiative. There's a word for a leader in lean thinking is called the lean thinking manager teacher. Right. It's really hard to say and it's too long to codify very well but it has the right connotation. So when I'm in a room with executives or managers I say well, what we need is lean thinking manager teachers. So you understand lean, you manage that way right and you teach others. That's the lean paradigm. So it, it, lean can't exclude people in a position of authority because the flow, the flow goes through them, work originates them. So leadership training, time and time again, the leaders know what they're doing, they can lead, they actively participate, they, they, you know, they're, they're doing their own inspect and adapt, they're eliminating impediments before we get to them. Those are the organizations that are most successful, most quickly with SAFE. And, and what problems or what challenges do we have getting leaders to leadership training? Well, many of them haven't been in a training for some time and uh, they're busy they're you know being pecked to death by a flock of ducks as the saying goes and it's, it's hard to imagine that they can that they can get the time but we approach it as you know pretty pretty bold face we'll say uh, how do you learn new things if you don't take the time to learn and and they don't so we we put forth a two-day program we did that not because we knew that's what we needed to do we did a large rollout that was far less successful than later rollouts and, and, and in that process we recognized that we had rolled out Scrum. We taught a few thousand people a new way of working. Nobody had taken the time to teach their leaders or managers. As a matter of fact, they were excluded from the training. Right. That was the old days and you kind of remember how it was like is that those guys don't really get it so they're not really going to be helpful here. Well guess what? They have to be helpful here. So excluding them didn't, doesn't, doesn't work. So we, in the next large program, we just took a frontal assault. We said, we're gonna need to train the leaders first. And we asked for two days, and you can imagine what they said. Too busy. Said, too busy, and you know what we said? So are we. Because if you don't wanna invest that time, you won't actually have the knowledge to succeed. So why would we, you know, bust our nose on the door here doing all this work and creating a sense of frustration that we could be more agile if only the governance model, the funding model, HR, HR the way work flowed through the system, the, the portfolio level, if only all that other stuff worked. So let's, let's go directly at that other stuff and talk about the evolution. Now, in a two-day leading safe class, there are many epiphanies, and you've seen it yourself, where people go, wow, this is really practical and I get it. But it's a journey of months and years to go to move to lean agile budgeting to start rethinking the whole compensation profile to think about roles and titles in the way that that uh, th the role supersedes the title and you still have to have a title so it, it takes time to work all those elements through the system and we want the leaders to think about it early I also described that in most leading safe classes you got three types of people in the audience there are always people that want to do lean and agile at scale or safe whatever whatever otherwise you wouldn't be there and there's always people that are kind of the resistors they don't like change they're fearful for their job they're going to be resistant to change and that's maybe that's a third and there's another third and the other third is there to learn so when you teach the class you teach to those that are there to learn i don't worry about the resistors i'm not going to pivot them in a day the people that are already on board sorry but I can't spend much time worrying about your questions right now because we have a group here that, that really really want to learn and then if you just draw the, the pie chart of that if you can move from you know 
one third really wants to do it to two thirds get it and the one third now that's resisting well guess what they're outnumbered so that's the tipping point that's the point at which there's enough people there that even though some people don't want this change you can you can you can power through that and those folks will come on board over time they'll you know they'll jump on that agile release train some of them get hit by the train it's their choice and that's a frank conversation as well we're we're doing this i'm sitting here in london because this is a better way of working period so you it's really hard to argue with a provably better way of working and reducing time to market so these are the best tools we have for that if we had other tools we'd use them i don't care what you call it but this this is the right this is the current best known way of working it's better results are better people like it better it's a it's an immutable force so as you address the enterprise there's a mutable force coming your way. Do you want to be hit by that force, or do you want to harness that force for your own for your own welfare? And, and is it a binary decision? So if, if the leaders are too busy, then we're too busy, or is there a halfway house? Well, that's the the world is very Gaussian distributed, right? <laughs> there are some people that aren't ever going to go to training, and there are others. Uh, for example, um, you know the SPC class. That's the deep class. That's yeah. a four full days. Uh, we were invited to do an on-site SPC for an executive team. Wow. I know. So I, I asked that vice president when I arrived there, at first we thought it was kind of a mistake. We're working through purchasing and saying, is this really the right thing? Um, and they said, no, no, we, we want to do this. We, we, want the, we want to take the SBC class. So I, I, I went to the executive at the start of the meeting and I said, I'm kind of curious about this because this is not the course that we designed for you. So th and he said, but this is the deepest training you have, right? We said, yeah, this is the deepest we have. He said, I'll be damned if myself and my team are going to know less about the new way of working than the other people that get trained. So that's one end of the spectrum. Yeah. Other end of the spectrum is they're not coming. And that's, that's a worrisome end. Okay. Everything in the middle. So most, most times the basic selling proposition, if the people around the art will take leading, success, leading safe, you'll succeed. Does that mean that director level above that and others and if HR doesn't come, if legal doesn't come, if suppliers aren't there, if IT isn't there, are you going to fail? Not necessarily because you're going to get the critical mass started. Uh, and then also in response to market demand, we had to recognize that sometimes that two days is too initial, too tall an order initially. Yeah. So we created this executive workshop, very interactive, kind of you know, problem based, what issues you're struggling with. What, those are real problems. Here's some principles. Here's some ways to think about the problem, and to set the vector that said, "Wow, that's that's a better way to think about the problem." Um, but I need to know more. So there's some small risk that somebody said, "Well, I got you know, I took the workshop." I think if you take the workshop and you don't go to training, you really missed the point because the whole point is that these principles are deep and the practices of all of them are deep and you're going to need to do both. So we did put the workshop out there. As you know, it's a tool that you have every day. It's, you, can, you can deliver it for free. You can charge for it. It's none of our business. Um, and, and we watch that a little bit, but that's, you know, there's many, many points on the curb. Some will do leading safe and then a workshop for others. In the end, the lean enterprise essentially requires everybody to think about the problem differently. They start visualizing work, they see cues, they see work in process, they recognize we're, we're, one of our common, common concerns in our organization, too much whip again, okay? And we go through periods of saying, we need to reduce the whip, and what's that mean? What stuff do we have in flight that we could finish? So that's a different way of thinking about the problem. And then of course the leadership is different too. You know, this next generation of knowledge workers yeah. we manage have different expectations. So do this this way, write that method, um, give it to the tester, uh, that's not gonna fly very much longer. So without leadership support, I personally wouldn't go there, but you can get it a lot of different ways. It's not a one size fits all answer to how do we get our leaders on board. And I'll also tell you that in some cases, you know, uh, traditional PMO organizations, they worry us at the same time. I see them in class all the time. They're going, we know we're having a problem with time to market. We're not stupid. And we've got this governance model, but we don't have anything to replace it with. So, you know, a complete down and dirty agile that has no governance, we, we don't get that. And our old one doesn't work, so let's talk some more about it. So I think, you know, little by little, better ways of working win because, the, the, in, you know, the economics wins, not to mention the employee engagement. So we'll get there over time in, in most enterprises. So the maxim, train everyone, Lord trains, still exists. Absolutely. It's the simplest people. thing I've ever, I always say too much. I've said too much already. <laughs> but train everyone, launch trains, always works. And we've never had that fail. And, and it's still to a point, I think you were, you were there maybe six or eight months ago, where I asked the group, 
of, of SPCs and trainers, I said, have you had the experience where you've had the opportunity to train everyone? Stand up. Yeah. And, and so I said, remain standing if you, if you receive substantial, the substantial business benefits in that case. Everybody stay standing. And I say, do you have some experiences where you didn't train everyone? Okay? And then remain standing if you got an equivalent result. Yeah. And Ooh. Excuse the pun, but it, I've done that. Yeah. It, was a, it, it, it was a train crash. Yeah, it was. It happens. It happens. So, you know, we're building our economy, our social system, our healthcare system, defense, our personal security is depending upon systems that have never been built before. That's a really big job. Do we really think that we could just take a team and sort that out? Or do we have to, is this really an industry-wide movement where the entire enterprise has to understand the new way of working? And, and as we all know, it's the latter. And we've seen good cases. We see companies that are quintessentially agile. Now, we're not all NetApp or Spotify. Some of us build hard stuff. Some of us put up a satellite. We'll try continuous delivery with that. Okay, we launched it yesterday. Oh, that's great, you've got a new module. We don't have over-the-air updates. So talk to me about continuous delivery now. So there, there's a spectrum from you know websites like ours that could be continuous that, that aren't necessarily based upon market demands to big things. Like, you know when a, when a combine leaves the factory, I can upgrade its software, but I can't change the transducers out without much work. I can't increase the resolution of the GPS system. So there's again a full a gamut of possibilities of what it means to, to deliver more frequently, and every enterprise eventually needs to understand that and sort out for themselves what they can deliver when. And 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 if you want to reduce time to market, the question is for what. One feature, one component, one system. I want to launch more satellites, not necessarily reduce time to market for maybe the satellite data feed. Oh, gosh, I could do that with a continuous delivery model. So it's complex stuff, and hundreds and thousands of people are involved. So I, I think it defies simple solutions. I don't think you can just put a scrum circle on there or say we're going to use extreme programming, or even for that sake, just we're going to take safe out of the box and solve this problem. We need big tools to deal with these big problems. And leaders to lead. Yep. And we need, the, we need our leaders to lead.